No. <laughs> Latrice. <laughs> It's your girl Aisha Shasha and I am dishing up your all-stars roundup for this week and can we please just take a moment can we please just have a moment of silence for our dearly beloved Latrice I cannot believe that Latrice is gone already like already come on now come on now the thing is right is like just like Monique I too feel conflicted because I love Latrice. Latrice is like my favorite. She's been my favorite from day, okay? She's the one who got me into Drag Race in the first place, okay? I've had the pleasure of meeting the queen in person, okay? Like I love Latrice, but I do feel that it was her time to go. And I feel bad for saying that because like, I don't know, like I feel, I feel like, like I owe it to her to, save her no matter what <laughs> but i don't know like the performance it was it wasn't it wasn't really there was it Let, let's let's be honest so it kind of was her time but my god like the nation must have just wept when they saw that happen oh my goodness i can't even get over it oh Okay, I'm over it now. Before I continue, let me just say a massive thank you for stopping by and for joining me in this Drag Race All-Stars review. If you are a big fan of Drag Race, then make sure that you do definitely stick around because I'm gonna be reviewing All-Stars every single week. If you're new to my channel, there is something here for everybody. So feel free to have a look through my playlists and find something else that you like. If you missed last week's episode, it will be in there as well. So we're gonna jump straight into it. So the challenge this week was an acting challenge, which I absolutely love love and it was a jersey justice theme so basically three ridiculous scenarios all done in a jersey style lord have mercy <laughs> the queens went to town with their looks i have to say like everybody just looked a hot mess <laughs> I was loving it though, absolutely loving it. So first up, we've got Manila and Naomi Smalls. Um, and their scenario was that basically Naomi made Manila look like a female dog. I'm trying to keep it clean here, but y'all know the words that were used. Um, <laughs> I'm actually just glimpsing over now at Manila's face. Man, she, 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 did, she did take it there, she did. So... Basically, she's got this ridiculous poodle-esque hair. Even, you know, like the boots with like the fur on it, it, it kind of tied in with the whole look. I was really, really enjoying that. I felt that she stayed very true to her character. Um, you know, the accent was hilarious. And yeah, I, I just thought that she was absolutely brilliant. Like I really enjoyed watching her. But Lord have mercy, Hail Mary and all the rest of it. When Naomi Smalls walked in looking like that. Oh Lord, man, the tan. It, li it literally looked like she had a bag of Cheetos on hand and she smothered her face in that. And like all of the like big crimp, um, thing that she had going on and she had the dog with her as well and then oh my god the makeup was just horrendous it was so so funny oh my gosh and her accent seriously what was that michelle was like so state your name and she was like the funny with an i angeline with the y ricotta like the cheese permanata <laughs> like, what I thought that their improv was really good as well. Like you could really see them both just like vibing off each other very, very well. Like out of the two, I think I think I may have preferred Naomi just because like the voice was just so ridiculous and she was just really good at, you know, doing like the off the cuff stuff. But you know, Manila did a fantastic job as well. Both of them worked really, really well together. And I know that this meant quite a lot to Naomi because she's looked up to Manila for God knows how long. So, you know, I think that it was a really, really great partnership and they, they did absolutely slay this challenge. 
if you missed it, definitely go back and watch it before it gets taken down off YouTube because I'm already seeing videos being taken down. So hurry up and watch it quickly because it was very, very good. For me personally though, I think that my favorite of the entire challenge has got to be Monique. Like she cracked me up. So her scenario was that she was um, getting married. Um, <laughs> she's getting married and um, she ordered a cake um, from her friend's mum um, and there was some um, some profanities written on the cake um, which were uh, defaming her character is the best way that I can put it <laughs> and uh, she wasn't happy about it so she was suing them um, but I just loved the way that she stayed in character fully she was fully committed even when she got cake dashed in her face she was still there fully committed on the floor you know tearing hair out you know like it was oh my gosh it was so so damn funny my name is anastasia ravioli ragu yes i'm part of the ragu family i got married last friday <laughs> that was awful oh my god what accent was that i'm normally actually not bad at accents but that was shocking unfortunately though latrice her jokes were just not landing at all she was staying too quiet especially in the beginning there wasn't enough attitude coming from her like monique was giving it everything um all the drama even just like with like her hair and makeup like it was just everything and i just wasn't really seeing enough from latrice it was only when like the fight scene happened then that's when you know you saw her really kind of get involved and start like amping herself up but I kind of felt like she just sort of sat back a bit on this challenge and she kind of couldn't afford to do that because let's face it, Snatch Game, that ended up being a hot mess because she got thrown off by Gia. So she needed to make sure she wasn't going to get thrown off in this challenge as well. And I noticed it earlier when they were like rehearsing in the workroom and she was saying about how, you know, Monique and Monet are just so, so loud. Da -da 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 -da. And it's like, yeah, they're chatting loud because they're being loud mouth jersey girls you need to step your game up especially if you're supposed to be the parent of one of these people like we kind of need to see where they got the attitude from so you need to bring it and she didn't so <sighs> they landed our queen in the bottom i actually really did quite like monet in this challenge um i think it was michelle who said that it was kind of just like watching monet in a blonde wig but i think that she did actually bring some character to it but I think that Monique quite clearly just stole the show. Shout out to Stacey Lane Matthews as well, who was clearly sitting in front of a green screen, but just there, just adding in her little, mm. oh. inserts <laughs> in between every bit. That was actually quite funny. Anastasia Fettuccine Alfredo Ragu al dente <laughs> What did she say? What did she call her? Anastasia Fettuccine Alfredo Ragu al dente I'll tell you something that I loved. My favorite line, probably in the whole of their scenario, quite possibly even in the whole challenge, was when Monet Exchange was like reeling off um, Anastasia's full name. And she was like, <laughs> I need to see if I can get it right. She went, Oh Lord, she went, Anastasia Fettuccine Alfredo Ragu al dente pasta. I'm like, I'm sorry, did you just say al dente pasta? <laughs> You're rude. <laughs> You're actually rude. I ain't gonna call the girl al dente pasta. <laughs> I've watched that part so many times and I'm still dying. Oh man. I don't know whether that was improv or if that was scripted, but whoever came up with it is flipping genius. That was hilarious. <laughs> The only issue that I would have with Monet is that she kind of went off on a bit of a tangent when she was like selling her story. So it kind of got a little bit, okay, and then what? And then what? Get to the point sort of thing. And you can kind of see that Michelle was a bit like, yeah, let, let, let's wrap this up sort of thing. But um, yeah, that, that, that line delivery, <laughs> that was hilarious. So yeah, I could forgive her for that. Okay, so 
<laughs> Another highlight for me from their from their scenario was when so Alexis or Monet Exchange comes up in Anastasia's face and it's all like oh it's all like Anastasia Rago Alfredo Al Dente Foster <laughs> you are a whore and then she just went oh my god and just clapped her across the face she spoke in her man voice <laughs> I was like no I'm done but she dropped the whole really really shrill shrill voice that she had and she just went oh my god and she just clapped her in the face and that's when Latrice finally came to life and then clapped her in the face and just went that's my daughter <laughs> I could watch their scene over and over and over again. That was pure, pure comedy. Absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. Next up, we've got Trinity and Valentina. Now, I was worried for Trinity, you know, because she forgot her name. <laughs> Michelle was like, state your name. And she's like, Fisher Pice. <laughs> I was like, oh. But, you know, it's fine because she kept it together. So it was all good. She looked ridiculous as well. I've got to give it to him all actually because like the costumes were absolutely hilarious. So anyway, their scenario was that um, Fisher Pice, <laughs> Fisher Pice um, invited Snooki, AKA Valentina um, over to come and hang out with her daughters um, <laughs> and, and offered to give her 2000 or was it $2,500? Yeah, $2,500, yeah. Um, and she turned up late like three hours late, um, looking like a hot mess. And basically she didn't believe that she was the real Snooki. So like, they go through all their drama, rare tear tear. But like, <laughs> I'm just looking at Valentina now. Lord have mercy. Like she just looks the hottest mess out of everybody. Like the makeup is just everywhere. The amount of tan is extreme. The hair is just all up to here and like rollers still in it titted them all out here like all up here and like cash falling out of it all. oh my god it was so bad so bad but so good <laughs> so anyway they get into a bit of a ruckus because it turns out that snooki was the og snooki um and she was like well what do you know bada bing bada boom <laughs> and then um fisher pice tore up the birth certificate and just decked her in the face Cue them rolling all over the floor, dragging off wigs and all sorts. Oh man, that was sheer comedy. Absolutely brilliant. I really did enjoy all three of them. I feel that my favorite has got to be um, Monique and Monet and Latrice, and then um, Trinity and Valentina, and then Manila and Naomi, just for energy. But I feel that in the trio of Monique, Monet and Latrice, it was really Monique and Monet who had the energy and Latrice was kind of, you know, pulling it down a little bit. But nevertheless, great television. Now let's get on to the runway. First and foremost, Miss RuPaul herself, absolutely stunning up until like the knee. I didn't like the boots with that dress. Um, I don't know. I feel that maybe the boots should have been worn last week because uh, obviously the whole boots house down challenge. But um, yeah, I wasn't really feeling those boots with that big, long, flowing green dress. Um, but hair and makeup, absolutely gorgeous. Living for that look. I really, really did enjoy that. So the theme of the runway was swerves and curves padded for the guards. Okay, so like different queens interpreted this differently. And I think that was actually quite cool, you know? So like, it wasn't just everybody just looking nicely curved. Like some people took it to different extremes, which I thought was quite cool. So first up, you've got Manila in her sort of like padded quilted outfit, which I thought was very, very clever. Um, there was a lot going on though, wasn't there? Quite, quite a lot going on in it. Now, don't get me wrong. You guys already know that I am ridiculously extra. Okay. So like, I love being over the top, but I think maybe if she'd like, lost the neck ruffles then you could have maybe sort of just seen the shape of like the top of the dress a little bit more i felt like it kind of got a little bit lost um so yeah that's that's one thing i was saying maybe to like lose the neck ruffles and then you can just sort of see the pretty shape of the dress but still really cute love the color she looked really sweet 
I did like Naomi Smalls's uh, cherry pie look that she had on the runway, um, serving Stepford realness. But what I love about her is that she does tell a story when she comes on the runway, you know? So I did like the whole like mascara running down her face sort of thing, the burnt pie, you know, or like the poison pie, <laughs> whatever. Like, I thought it was really, really quite cool. And yeah, she was padded for the gods. As for Trinity's look, I see what she was doing. I see that she was going for the whole like curves and swerves everywhere sort of look, but I'm not sure that I liked it on the clothes. Um, I loved it in the hair. I thought that the hair was fire. Loved, loved that. And I really like that color as well. I love rose gold hair. Um, but I, I don't think I was that much of a fan of it being so curvy and swervy everywhere on her outfit. Um, but the body looked good though. As for Valentina's look, I got it, but I didn't like it. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> Is that bad? Is that bad? But like, I understand that she's given us fashion, you know, I totally get it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it looks a bit messy for me in all, in all honesty. I just, I, I wasn't, I wasn't a fan. What did you guys think of that? Monique Hart, girl. <laughs> Listen, I can forgive her wearing brown cow again for this look because this was just ridiculously stunning, okay? <laughs> she took it to the extreme. I love that she was like, my look is inspired by Alexander Moo Queen. <laughs> we get that you're the brown cow. We get that you're stunning. Maybe this should be like the final brown cow piece because you kind of can't top that. <laughs> I just thought it was really comedic. I did really enjoy it, but maybe we shouldn't see any more of it because you don't want it to just become another sponge dress. Do you know what I mean? Latrice though, oh my goodness. Okay, so this dress, right? I was actually looking at this dress just like the day before I watched this um, because it's a really, really old picture of her that I saw. And I was like, my goodness, I don't think I'll ever get to see that gown um like on tv because this is such an old photo so she probably doesn't even have that gown anymore and then she walked down the runway in it and i was just like oh my god oh she was just dripping in those jewels and her hair looked beautiful like i just melted when i saw it like that is right up my street absolutely stunning like she is the definition of curves and swerves, okay? Like, this is just her category. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh man, she just looked great, didn't she? She just looked great. She didn't need to do anything else, but just put on a really nice gown. Fabulous. Monet Exchange, you're rude. <laughs> when she turned up in the black dress, you know, I didn't even clock that it was Kim Kardashian until she turned around. I saw the ass and I was like, oh. <laughs> It was so, so good. It was really, really well done. You know, like th the backside was just so ridiculous. I mean, it's not even that far off from how it actually looks. Cause it looks ridiculous, you know? <laughs> but like she took it to the extreme and you know, straight away you could see who it was. You know, we all know the iconic picture. She did a fantastic job. I really, really enjoyed that look. <sighs> okay, eliminations, right, well. I mean, we all know who went, but. Seeing Latrice break down like that, like that was really, really sad. Like I didn't, I didn't like to see her cry like that. Manila was like ugly crying as well. Like that was really quite an emotional moment. I think everybody just loves Latrice so much and looks up to her almost like a mother really. Do you know what I mean? Like she's been in the game for like a quarter of a century. Like that's long, you know? <laughs> So she is very, very well respected. She is, as they call her, the dearly beloved. She's almost holy, do you know what I mean? So like, to have to choose whether to eliminate her or someone else, like, it's really, really hard, especially if you're friends with both of them. Like, that must have been so, so hard. Um, so, you know, Latrice is there having her moment, crying her eyes out, you know, and then Valentina just ruins the moment and just saying, ladies, I'm boiling. My blood is simmering through my veins and I have something to say. 
And then she went on to talk about how someone didn't like her outfit. Girl, it's not about you, <laughs> okay? So sit your ass down. That's why Monique was like, listen, Valentina, I love you, but you're safe. So like, shut up. Honestly, sometimes Valentina just gets on my nerves because she's just like, she she has a tendency to just be all about herself. like, And that's not cool. Like if someone is having a moment, let them have their time. Like one of them is about to be evicted. You know what this was like just last week, okay? Like you wouldn't like it if someone else tried to come and like steal your moment like that. So like, just calm down in it. As for the lip sync, that was fire. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I really liked Manila's facial expressions. I thought that she was giving a lot of Tina Turner isms and schisms. So I was living for that. However, I pretty much couldn't take my eyes off of Monique. Like she was giving it everything, like everything. Um, those hair flips and luckily her wig stayed on for a change. <laughs> um, you know, just she, like, she just looked so much more like Tina, not just because she's black. I'm just saying just like the way she was dressed. Like, I don't know that that to me was just more Tina than what Manila had on. Um, and she was doing all of that in the thinnest stilettos I've ever seen. You gotta give the girl credit. Like, she gave it absolutely everything. She was fighting to save her friend. You could really and truly see that. I think that she definitely deserved to win the lip sync, but man, that must have been so hard for her to have to choose between Monet and Latrice. You could actually tell like when Monique revealed that she was letting Latrice go, like Rue's face, you could see that like, that was not what she wanted, not at all. It's not what anybody wanted, but at the same time, it's what was fair. Manila was in bits. She was proper like, <laughs> she was full blown ugly crying. Like she was like me at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> like she was like, <laughs> My girl, Latrice. I love the way that Latrice exited though, because she was like, always large and in charge, chunky yet funky, bold and beautiful. And this is not the last of me, darling. <laughs> I've got a feeling that Rue is probably gonna bring her back. Cause you know, she's always like, one of my queens may have left too soon. And then Latrice will just pop out of a box <laughs> or something. I'm pretty sure that they'll have to bring her back. They have to. It's Latrice. There you have it, my darlings. That is the end of your all-star roundup for this week. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do make sure you give it a big fat thumbs up. And of course, if you like this sort of content and you wanna see more, then don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss another video. Comment below, let me know who you want to win. Let me know who was your favorite of this week's episode. Let me know who you thought was the best dressed. In my opinion, it was Latrice, but let me know who you thought was the best dressed. Let me know what you thought about Latrice leaving. Like, are you even affected by it or are you like over it? I wanna know all of your views. Take care guys and I'll see you all soon. Bye.